make that pop. Pull up, pop up, then I make that pop. First drone, don't know where to start. This video is for you. Hit it. Big the pop. We are talking drones, 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 and more drones. I've had a few of them, flown a few of them, uh, know a little bit about them. So today I'm just going to kind of give you a little, little bit of information and a bit of a guide to help you buy your first drone. Now, I will, I will say I haven't had um, much experience with other brands than DJI. So I guess this review or this video is going to be biased to DJI. I have wanted to fly other drones, it's just the technology that's behind DJI is a cut above the rest. Not a lot of them are the same sort of technology and features that other drones have compared to the DJI group. Um, I just believe they are superior in what they do, so haven't really, f I've flown the real cheap ones that are very, very hard to fly, they're like, fly. They're like little mini FPV drones. Um, they're very hard to fly. So, where do we start? It's all about budget. It's all about budget. It's all about what you're willing to let go of, <laughs> to be honest. So, there's benefits to buying secondhand and there's benefits to buying brand new. One of the benefits of buying secondhand is obviously you could probably get yourself a really good deal and we all like a good deal. So, things that you can look for to buy. Two drones that I will recommend in the second hand department that are under $800 or should be under $800 and that is the DJI Spark and the DJI Mavic Pro, the first one. Them two drones I will recommend. The reasons why I recommend them. One, they are very smooth to fly and the joysticks and controls are very easy to use. Second, and it's the big one, it's probably the main one, that why I recommend these two drones is they have both have front facing sensors. So if you're about to crash into something, boop, it pulls up. So that is probably one of the biggest features. There's other features, but they're actually across the whole DJI range. Features like if you lose contact or something happens, usually there's settings that you can flick on that if whatever for some reason you lose contact with the controller and the drone, the drone will automatically fly home to where it took off. Just hope it's not on a boat because then you kind of have to go where it lands. Anyway, so that's the benefits of buying secondhand, buying brand new. Now, can get good value from buying secondhand, but there's one thing about buying brand new or buying a brand new drone that is good and will benefit you. So right eye DJI Refresher Care, what is it? It's essentially assurance for your drone. Now it does depend, uh, does vary from drone to drone the price of the DJI Refresher Care. Uh, for the Mavic Pro 2 it is $200. So you pay $200. It's, it can, you can only do it when you first buy it. Um, so that's why it is better to buy new, but you can get good value for second hand. Because once those second, if you buy second hand, it's not going to be able to give you that refresher care. So when you buy new, you get the refresh care. So like I said, this one's 200 bucks. So I pay that, it lasts a year. And in that year, if I was to crash my drone or anything was to happen, even water damage, as long as I can physically bring that drone and send it to DJI, they will replace it and you'll have to pay an access which for this one is $200 for 
So essentially, for the insurance you pay, depending if you crash it or not, 400 bucks all up. This drone here is worth two and a half thousand dollars. So you can see why having that refresher care, I'd rather pay that insurance and knowing that I'll be able to get another drone. Now, they, DJI have recently been able to extend it, so you can actually get insurance for two years, which is absolutely gorgeous, <laughs> to be honest. I'm on my second year now for the Mavic Pro 2. Um, I haven't crashed it yet. Actually, I have crashed it. I'm pretty sure I've seen it just to clip the trees. It's not far, but just there. It's got a wing. It's got a wing. <laughs> we, got, we got GPS, maybe. I've got spare wings. I'm just hoping that that's all that's broken. Yeah. So oh, I think yeah. it was still trying to hover in the tree. Yeah, it's um, it's pretty soft in there. Just in case it gets small. Yeah, if that's just a wing, turn the app on. We found it. Found it. <laughs> just, just under the tree where it should be. Where it is. Yeah, yeah we're still bad. good, lad. We're still it's just good. Just done a bit of a whipper snipper. Um, cut the grass. Hold that. Let's uh, gimbal up. I just want to see if the gimbal goes up. Is it? Yeah, I've yeah. got, I've got oh. all four repellers. Oh, is that what it normally does? Yep. Yep. Oh, yeah! Wow. That makes me so happy. It survived. <laughs> it really did survive. Uh, I thought I lost it for sure, and that was at the beginning of Cape York. Um, so, I highly recommend getting DJ or Refresh It Get. Now, I'll give you guys a couple of tricks, tricks and tips in flying. Now, um, one of my tips is essentially depending on the drone you buy, obviously they all vary in time. Um, they can't really give you a set time of how long they last because in Australia we're very windy or anywhere is really windy. The wind counts into the effect, counts to the fact of how quick you will use your battery. So, my little tip is leave one shot for every battery. Now, I know that sucks, but it makes you be more selective in your shots and you're not just filming whatever, but sometimes you can film whatever. That's that's up to you, but if you're looking at it from a content point of view, usually you could have one battery per shot, so you get time. So with my battery, I roughly get about 20 to 25 minutes. I'm done after 10. Out of that 10 minutes, I might only even use a 45 second parts all up like I might use five seconds here and there and they're the shots that I'm going to use for whatever video they are used for so my next little trick or tip it's really an accessory it is the phone holder adapter for your controller essentially it goes into the controller where the phone would go and sets up like that so your phone sits a bit higher and it's all in one it's kind of like you have a smart controller now next uh, trick or tip for the drone or it's actually again it's an accessory but it's still relative to what we're talking about it is these noise reduction propellers that you can buy they are pretty cheap you can buy them on eBay they do work essentially what it does it cuts out 20 or right, 10 to 15 percent of the noise so it flies a little quieter and with that you actually get better performance and better efficiency so you get a little bit more flight time about 10 to 15 percent with those noise reduction blades now they come standard with the mavic pro 2 and i recommend them next on the list is the ND filter. ND filter, I've gone on about these a few times guys. I run them on everything. This is the Polar Pro variable ND for the Mavic Pro 2. That just means sunglasses for your lenses and cuts out all that glare, brings back all that color that you see and it doesn't make your picture really, really bright. So, ND filters, Polar Pro, they are the ones, they are the guns, they are the brand that you need to buy if you're looking at putting a variable ND lens on them. Next, now you can buy your drone separate or in a fly more combo. I would suggest buying a fly more combo mainly because you get some more batteries and you're going to need them. One battery just isn't going to cut it if you've got something that you really want to capture and you're just not getting it and you're flying around or the wind is too high and you chew those batteries and you can't capture something else. You need a couple more batteries guys there. 
Um, definitely something that you would have to invest in. That's why I recommend getting a fly more combo no matter what drone you buy. Next one is landing gear. Now, if you are a bit sus on landing your drone, there's a few options you can get. They're all on eBay or online or whatever. There's lots of companies that make them. Some of them just do extended feet and it sits the drone higher when it lands. So if you're landing in some sort of long grass, it doesn't cut your feet, uh, cut the wings or anything like that. Um, here's some tricks and tips. Right, guys, to finish off the drone video, what I wanted to do today while I'm out in the wilderness is show you a few hands-on things about flying the drone. That will finish off this drone video perfect, I think. Just to give you an understanding on how I fly the drone or what I like to do when I fly the drone. Again, this is obviously my opinion. There's plenty of other opinions out there. Uh, if you want something to do for yourself, you just gotta fly it. Give that time to learn how to fly your drone and learn all the settings. If settings is a thing that you want me to cover, um, drop a comment and I might do another video on some of the settings that I use. Uh, again, I'm gonna flick the drone up and then we're gonna look at some of the things that uh, some of the things that you can use at home, some of the little tips that you can do when you're flying your drone. Right, now the first tip I'm going to show you guys on flying the drone. Now, this is something that I've actually just picked up and learnt myself. I have seen other people do it this way. Now, you don't have to do it. I just think, for me, this gives a cleaner, smoother way of flying. Now, you get removable joysticks on some of your on, of the DJI drones I actually remove them and fly it without it I find that using it with just the the d-pad itself and just flying it like that I actually get a smoother crisp shot uh, that's definitely a tip that you know if your joysticks can be removable have a play around with it that might be something you like to do or will find easier to use so that's my first tip is fly without the joysticks now if you're a joystick man sweet no worries so what we're gonna do oh, actually so what we're going to do is take her up and then we're going to, I'm just going to show you a couple of shots uh, of that you can do that aren't on uh, automated on the drone itself. So taking off, now there's, you can pretty much just, with the DJI drone, you can just take off. Like there is no, um, there is no uh, special way to do it, it's not technical, it's so what we're going to do is take off. So now again, you can press the button on here to take off, but a little trick that I learned from a mate when I was up at Cape York. Now essentially you just want to push, uh, push your sticks in on a diagonal so they're like, essentially you're going like that, and that will start up the drone. You can hear that now. So it's, it's just sitting at a low idle now before we take it up, and then obviously all we do, you can hear that. So now we're up. Okay. So we're in flight. So, what I'm about to show you guys is a shot called the reveal. Now, there's many different versions of the reveal. Um, the many different ways you can do the reveal. So the way I, there's plenty of ways to do it. But one of the main things I need to show you guys is just that this isn't an FPV drone, okay? Now, when you have an FPV drone, they can fly really fast and you get really good, uh, really good things, uh, really good shots with an FPV drone. Now, again, this is not an FPV drone. This is not what this thing's. This thing is for capturing slow cinematic shots. That's the way I see it, and that's the way I fly it. Now, plenty of other reasons, ways you can fly it. So what we're going to do now is pan down. Now again, I'm not I'm not capturing anything amazing for you guys, but I just wanted to show you guys some of the little tricks that I use to uh, reveal a subject, an object, a place of where you're at, you know, people, whatever. This is a cool way of doing it. You can do it at any altitude, high or low. Um, this one is called the pan up. Now pan up is essentially your camera is facing down, looking at the ground, and you're gonna slowly pan it up. And this is what it'll look like. I'm getting attacked by bugs everywhere. Righto, so again, the question, what we're doing right now is called the pan up reveal. So essentially, you can do this at any altitude, high or low. This will work really good. So if you wanna capture something that looks good and shows an epic view or something like that, you essentially want to point your camera down on the drone and then slowly pan up as you're moving forward and it'll give you this effect right here. So we're flying forward, panning up. Boom. And then you just want to slow that right down. 
and then continue forward. That is essentially the pan up uh, feature. So the next thing we want to do is the reveal fly back. So if you have a subject that is, say on a cliff, you want to pan backwards from it. So say you're on a cliff of an ocean, you want to pan facing backwards and then you just want to do that slow. So we're going to do this slow with me. Just trying to find the drone first. There it is. So essentially, you're gonna see me in a second. And we're just gonna fly back. There I am. And that's just essentially me showing off where I am and you don't exactly see where I am until right at the last minute, which I think is a great shot. So essentially guys, all I'm trying to tell you is, is just slow, slow it down, slow it right down. Now, um, if you want me to cover it in another video, just drop a comment and I'll show you, I'll do another video of actual settings. I just don't have the time right now to show you because it is actually a bit of, um, it is actually quite the, uh, <laughs> quite the video and I'll, I'll have to go quite in depth with it to show you guys through the app itself how to do everything in the app so if you want that video guys just hit that uh, subscribe button hit that like button drop a comment in the comment section say Aka, I need the settings give us the settings as simple as that if I get enough interest in that I will do a video on the settings right now the next shot I'm gonna do uh, is the pull away or the pull back or the dolly back at some industry people call it's essentially you're showing off the shot you're showing off where you are so we're going to start in nice and close you'll hear the drone as it is now you see me on the back i'm going to give a wave and i'm going to go right back like this and we can do this fast goes back a little bit and then pan right up take the drone right up still keep me in this shot but how cool is that showing off the area and we just pan them right up. So again, that's another, they call that, they call that the pan back. Now, I, I love doing that shot. <laughs> You'll know that I love doing that shot. If you look at my Instagram and other videos, I just think it gives a great perspective. Drones are just that thing that gives the great perspective on where you're at, what you're doing, and you know, gets to places that, you know, if you're lazy and don't want to get there, just, and you don't have to walk, you just fly a drone, really. It's, They've just come a long way um, in the way of technology. Like I said at the start of the video, guys. Um, like I said at the start of the, start of the video, guys. I'm just landing the drone now. Uh, the drone technology that DJI has is absolutely insane, and they just keep getting better and better as the as the models get on. That's it, guys. Get yourself a drone. Like and subscribe. I'm out. I'm doing some stuff on the tracks. Let's get it. Are you not entertained? Are you not entertained? <laughs> back in that, back in that bag again. Whoa, whoa, yeah, yeah. Hey, 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 hey. Back in that, yeah. Tell them to watch it. Now I ain't talking my pockets. Just know we ain't running out the way that we stock it. If I got it, you got it. If I call it, she slide and tell her to mop it. Yeah, I got that shit.